Welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at one of these three chess, visually, chess visualization exercise apps. You can find these on leestudy.org. Uh, just today I registered an account. I haven't even looked at what settings are available. Apparently there are sound settings, board settings, a lot of other stuff. Um, but today here, what most enticed me was this concept of practicing tactics without being able to see any of the pieces. Uh, traditionally, this thing that's called blind tactics would be analogous to solving tactics just looking at a book or playing a real tournament game. You would be expected to find the solution without moving the pieces. Then you would move the pieces and you get one chance. So, yeah. Um, and you'd have to know when the tactics are going to happen. Uh, here, in Peaceless Tactics, this is uh, more interesting, so let's take a look. <laughs> uh, I did not make that pun on purpose. Um, yeah, no, this is what it's like. So, the Arbiter tells you where the pieces are at. You can see here are the ranks, 8 through 1, files A through H. And here's the pieces. Imagine that they're on the board, white to play and win. That's the challenge. So looking at a pawn on c5, my immediate instinct is to rush it up to c8 as fast as possible. Um, there's a bishop on f3, king on f2, pawn on g3, king on g4. So we're in check. So we have to play king f4 uh, to get out of check while protecting our g3 pawn. Black plays any move, and our king shepherds in either the c pawn, which is presently obstructed by the f3 bishop, or more likely our king ushers the g pawn up to victory. So this is actually pretty simple and straightforward. So let's move the king to f4, and there are additional moves to play. Uh, black has played bishop c6, so let's play pawn g4. Bishop e8 stops an immediate pawn g6, but our pawn's not that far off the board yet. Anyway, our king is still opposing the f2 king, so let's play pawn g5. And at this point, our pawns are on c5 and g5. The opponent's bishop is on e8. Our king is over here, black's king is there, so... This is pretty simple, straightforward. You just push this, and this promotes. Or black takes it, and you take it back. Easy. All right, next puzzle. Pawn a4, pawn e4. Now, the reason I'd signed up for an account on here was to see whether there's some increase in difficulty, or whether the puzzles are strictly random. Um, so... We'll see if the challenge factor ever increases. This is a textbook problem where white intends to play pawn up to a8 queen. This only wins if the promotion uh, pawn to a8 lands with check with black's king on f3. Presently, black's king's on g4. So if you were to push pawn a4, a5, then black would respond pawn e3 a6, e2, a7, promote, promote, is not check. Um, also note, with our king on c3, as much as we'd like to get in the way of the pawn, uh, we're just never in time. Well, huh. The way most of these problems work, our king's normally on c3, black's king's normally on g3, so that if you were to attempt to blockade the pawn from the front, Black's king would blockade your king for blockading, and then the pawn would hit you with check. So my first inclination was to play king d4, and to try, uh, after black plays something like king f4 or king f3 to protect the pawn, uh, then to push the a pawn. But, since our king is one rank below the opposing king, we can actually just move our king to e1, and black can't stop that. So, yep, king f3, king e1, 
Let's play pawn e3, and now we just promote. We just push, push, etc., and we win. Easy. <laughs> White to play. King f6, bishop c5, knight f1. Huh. Well, White's not going to win this because White has only a king. But White can draw this by taking the bishop. All right, next puzzle. Um, White to play king b7, pawn c6, pawn a3, king e5, bishop f5. Now, two thoughts come to mind. One is that we push the c-pawn, black takes, we play king takes, and then hope to promote our a-pawn. And in reality, this almost never works because the black king will catch up with our a-pawn or force our own king to blockade the pawn. We could quickly read this out, however. So our king's already on b7. Black's bishop's on f5, so if we play c7, they play king d5, c8, bishop takes, king takes, king c6. And their king can stop our a3 pawn. So that's not possible. Um, so the alternative, with our king already on b7, is that we're going to just push the a pawn and hope for the best, because nothing else works. Easy. Push the pawn. Okay. <laughs> I say it's easy. Um, no, seriously, do we have to play c7 first and then play the a-pawn? I ruled this out because it seems stupid, but uh, evidently that matters for some reason. I'm not sure why we did play c7 first. I'm actually questioning the puzzle. <laughs> hmm. That's strange. That doesn't make sense. Let's set this up on the Lee chess board and see what I missed. Alright, so clear the... Oh, right, we have to use the board editor here. Uh, board editor... Here we are. Uh, chess cube! No. <laughs> Everybody remembers chess cube. Alright, so... King b7, pawn c6. Then maybe there's a way in the platform to do this so you don't have to do it yourself. e5, f5. So, white to play. Uh, analysis board. You could also type in just 8, 1, k, 6, 2, p, 4, 5, 4k, b2, etc. You could type in the FEN notation and read it out that way. Sometimes it's faster to do that than it is to click everything with the mouse, but here there were only five pieces to set up. So I would contend that pushing this cannot be worse than pushing that. Is A4 a solution here? A4 is not a solution. Okay. Because this pawn gets pinned, and then black plays king d6 to cur uh, to win the pinned pawn. However, in this situation now, um, bishop g4 was the attempted defense, which doesn't make any sense. Uh, I contend that king d6 is a better try, because white has only one winning move here. Um... However, I'm curious. Oh, well, I just assume that this... Yeah, white can just ignore the bishop. There's no way this bishop can end up on a6 to blockade both pawns. Alright, so that makes sense. Not super obvious, but c7 first actually has to be played. I did think about this, and I'm like, well, this is just patently ridiculous. This is the first puzzle of its kind where a pin could affect the outcome of the game. But, yeah, if you allow bishop e4 pinning the pawn, then king d6, and then bishop takes c6 is check. And that check prevents white from being able to promote the a-pawn. So, uh, move order, there, or c7 there actually matters. Which is kind of special. Um... King b5, pawn a2, pawn c3, pawn f6, king e4. Huh. 
So is there any reason we don't want to just push the pawn to a8 with check and win? a8 check looks good to me. Black to play. Okay, that's one reason. So the board is inverted. Note the numbers have changed. The files or the ranks and files have changed. We are actually playing the black pieces here. So that changes a little bit. Our king's on e4 here. Um, any reason we don't want to just push the pawn up to f1 with check? Nope, didn't think so. All right, king b6 escapes the check, but we want to promote our pawn anyway, even though it doesn't promote with check. Yeah, easy. All right. I mean, if there's these few pieces remaining, uh, the answer is either use your king to win a pawn or just promote the pawn. All right, we're controlling the, the white pieces here. Our pawn's on h5, black's king's on c3. Ergo, we should just push the pawn. And push it again, and this is check. Next puzzle. All right, black's king's on h5, our pawn's on h6. Uh, it's blocked by a pawn on h7, so we'll have to... Because uh, black's king is attacking our h-pawn, we have to play king g7 to defend our pawn. Black is racing their f-pawn down the board. We have to take here. Um, I think king g8 is probably correct here. I'm not completely sure. Oh, I could read this out. So black's pawn's on f4. This doesn't matter. Why would this matter which square I pick? How could this possibly matter? Oh! Oh, this is an f-pawn. So we need our king to be as close to the promotion square as possible. So king has to go from h7 back to g6 and make a b-line to the e3 square. Yeah. This, this is a little tricky. Uh, I'm sorry, king g6 is illegal on account of the king here, but uh, if I had to choose between g8 and g7, g7 is the right square. Unless by some miracle, like, there's no way, but um, king g8, f3, pawn h8, check... King g4, queen f6, king g3. Uh, wait, is black's pawn on f3 or f2? It does matter which square it's on. We have to do this calculation again. King g8, pawn f3, promote with, no, h7, pawn f2. So the pawn makes it up to f2, black's king makes it to g3, and therefore... Unless our queen can teleport from h8 to f1 in a single move, the only way to avoid uh, a draw here would be to use our king in concert with our queen, which is going to require king g7 here. Is king g7 not legal? Why is king g7 not suggested? We've played king g7, f5, king takes pawn, f4. King g7 needs to be suggested here because it's the only... What have I missed? Yeah, no, it's king g7. That's a bug. Um, we have to promote our pawn. And black anticipates our promotion check by playing king g4, but we're going to promote anyway. And this is not a good puzzle because the next move is critical. Um, well, no. After black plays king g3, you play queen h1, king f2. No, the next move is critical if black plays king g3. Um, because black's threatening to play king f2. Why is this counted as a solution? This is not trivial. All right.
back to the study board we go. So we're going to take a look at what I was saying earlier about you could just key in the position. So there's the queen. Our king's on g7. Our pawn's on h8. So we say seven queen. Seven queen slash six king one slash eight slash eight slash. And then king's on g4 and the pawn's on f3. So g4 would mean 6 king 1, pawn f3 would be 5 pawn 2, and 2 blank ranks, and black to play. There we go. This is the position. This is it without the board flipped. It would have been easier to use the board editor to set this up, but what I'm contending is if black plays king g3, your next move actually matters here. What? Wait, Queen H1 wins? How does Queen H1 win this? What am I learning now? F2. Okay. But it's because of all this that our king has to make a beeline. I said for E3, but the king could actually it just has to approach the pawn as quickly as possible. If our king had started back here, if we were one tempo behind, this king would not be able to catch up with the pawn. So, like, if we burned a tempo on any of these stupid moves, um, then that's bad. There is lots of ways to temporize in this position with checks and pins. Or there's four ways. Queen h5 check, etc. Don't throw the win, but they don't may bring us any closer. The only one that actually brings us closer to victory is queen e4 check, which allows our king and queen to checkmate as black promotes, which is a little not the easiest concept to grasp. Um, wait. Okay, yeah, our king is too far away. I've actually lost the defensive side of this before. I was playing, I forget if it was Internet Chess Club or Free Internet Chess Server or something. No. It was the Global Internet Chess Server, GICS, where some, like, expert or master kicked my butt in this... No, it must have been an expert. But they'd anticipated a situation just like this. Um, forced me to play King F1. They play King G4. And I was thinking the whole time I was fine here. And they had foreseen King G3. They'd seen this position like many moves in advance. And at some point I had offered a draw because I was like certain that it was a draw. Uh, but yeah, I think I had a position more or less like this. And my opponent demonstrated the win. And I was spellbound by this because at this point I had read about somewhere between 20 and 40 books about endgames. It feels like feels like that. Probably closer to 20. Um, but I had read every endgame book I could get my hands on. And you better believe that this kind of F-pawn uh, stalemate concept, like... If white misplays this, um, so if white just uses only their queen and forgets to involve their king in this, like, say they were to play something like this, this is the way this usually plays out. Um, it's just like there's no way to win this position anymore. Um, no matter how many checks you give, black can interpose. And you might think, oh, well, I've got this clever little tactic here, right? Um, and you think, hey, that's a fork. And that for black to defend this pawn, they have to go uh, in front of the pawn, and this allows my king to step closer. You don't have to defend the pawn. And then you're like, hey, but I get the pawn, and oh, right, that's stalemate. So anyway, that's why you have to use your king here. Um... So, um, yeah, this is why our solution has to involve King G7.
rather than king g8. Because that king g7 brings our king one square closer to e3 or g3 to deliver the checkmate when black ultimately ends up promoting on f1 and is made it on d2 or h2 respectively with our queen. So, fun times. Uh, okay, we're playing black, which is why all the numbers are backwards here. Our king's on h5, pawn's on h3, pawn g2. Rook g3 is attacking both pawns, king f4. Um, well, g1 just loses uh, our pawn to rook takes pawn. So our options are either use our king to try to chase the rook, which looks not very smart, or play pawn h2, where we've got two pawns on the seventh, and either one of them will promote. Uh, it's just a matter of time. So, yep. And rook takes g2, and then we promote here, and the rook h2 fork just loses the rook. Now you have to win with queen against rook, which uh, I've done before, but it's not easy. All right. <laughs> king and rook, king and rook, black to play. Oh, the king and the rook are not on the same line. That's kind of refreshing in a way. Uh, but yeah, the king's on the eighth rank on the edge of the board. That's the thing to note here. So we just take our rook and we say checkmate. And that's that. All right. Next puzzle. Black to play. King h4, pawn g4, pawn h2. Rook c1 prevents pawn h1. Immediately, white's king is in no man's land where it's going to make no difference whatsoever. Again, the pawns will need to support each other. Um, due to this rook checking laterally, for, uh, yeah, laterally from the C file, we can't use our king to help the H pawn promote, so we just have to push the G pawn and hope that it's good enough. All right, king f5, push it again. And if white tries to checkmate or something, um, uh, you could use the queen to block out of the g-file. Or to defend the h2 pawn or whatever. Uh, the point is, prefer to promote in the way that's not the corner, just in case like somehow there's a perpetual somewhere and you need to escape your king into the corner or block with the queen. All right. F7, F3 are our pawns. King's on D1, king on D3. Oh, that's kind of weird. So white is not immediately threatening mate in 1. However, we have a pawn on F7 that can block this rook from attacking vertically to hit this pawn. And we're threatening F2, F1 with check. So we play F2 and then we play F1. Assuming we don't get mated on a1 first, but our pawn promotion lands with check. And this rook just happens to be... Okay, here's our king. Here's white's pieces. Note that there's no checkmate here. So we just push the pawn. And white moves their king away to avoid the check. And we push the pawn again. Easy. Alright, so... Here, white to play. Yeah, I was kind of hoping that some of these would increase in difficulty, to be honest. Um, is there a setting for board dimension? Silly as that sounds. No, didn't think so. Um, does the scroll wheel... Maybe the scroll wheel makes this look more appealing on stream. Sorry that the files are cut off, but I think you can use your imagination. I think this looks slightly better. If we prefer a different board, let me know. We can get a different board. Um, so, white to play, king f6, rook g1. Black's king's on h6, so we just play rook h1 check. Black blocks, we take the blocking piece and that's checkmate. Boom. Next. All right. Black to play. White's king's on e1. We play rook to the edge of the board. Checkmate. 
it's not made in one. Oh, look at that list misalignment here. Um, yeah, all the dots are slightly misaligned. The board's slightly misaligned. It's probably my browser. Sorry about that. Um, but we check, and boom, that's mate. All right. I wonder if arrows are affected too. Yeah, all the markers are affected somehow by me zooming in. Sorry about that disorientation. Uh, I could zoom back to default. Uh, maybe this does look best. But I would like to zoom in this right side of the screen here. So it looks more visually impressive. Like if you could like double the size of every one of these pieces here, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, now we need to zoom in the piece list. So forget the board orientation. These have to be legible for you guys. All right, our king's on d3, white's king's on d1. We give checkmate. Checkmate. All right, next. All right. Um, our pawn's on h2. We are not in a mate net because our king is not in the corner. So we promote and win. Uh, unless there's some reason we don't want to promote. But promoting very, very, very likely candidate to win. Oh, I'm sorry. The white works on d1, not on d8. So we have to consider the promotion candidate and immediately reject it because white just takes the promoted piece. Instead, we just push our pawn. And white plays some move, and we push again. And we just keep pushing the pawn. We got a pawn here, pawn there, king here. Eventually, one of our things will promote. Easy. All right, rook h8. We're playing white here. H8, pawn, king c3, black's king's on c1, so we just give mate. Boom, boom, next. White to play. Hmm. Black's got a queen on g7, king f5. Uh, we want to play c8 check, but we can't because our pawn's pinned. Our next so the queen on g7 is not attacking our pawn on b4. Pushing the b pawn here is actually too slow. We want to promote as soon as possible. Because our remaining pawn is not a rook pawn, it's the b pawn. Our king can catch up with the b pawn and help escort it back up the board. So c8 check is, well, illegal, but it's a very likely candidate to win. Um... Black's threatening king e6 to win our d-pawn. I'm oh, sorry, they're threatening king and then king d6. And ganging up on our pinned c-pawn. Um, which takes two moves to do. We don't have to play king b8 right away. We could play pawn b5. Huh. I don't see any advantage to pawn b5, but I don't see any disadvantage either. And that it's playable, and that all these puzzles have exactly one solution does make me wonder. Um, let's consider the main line. King b8, queen f8, check, promote, queen takes queen, king takes, king e5, pawn b5, king d6, pawn b6. Our king on c8 is sufficient to stop uh, this king from approaching and hitting the pawn. Wait, so if king b8 wins, if king b8 wins, then, um, all right, what's the duality here? Black's king's on f5, um, so if king b8, one thing we looked at, the simple line is this queen f8 check and next changing the queen for the promoted pawn. Another is queen e5, pinning the pawn for a move. And then if we play pawn b5, they take the pawn. Uh, we've played king b7, they continue approaching with their queen, eventually take our b pawn and then go back. Well, if they take the b pawn, it's over. So we've got to get our king and two pawns together. It's pawn b5 is necessary. Black has pinned our c pawn. But now with the king on e6, uh, they're threatening king d6. 
followed things like uh, Queen G2 check and being able to... Uh, there's some way that this queen and king can approach a king in two pawns, so pawn b6 is just much too slow here. Uh, it results in all our pawns getting pinned and lost. Or at least the b pawn is lost, and once the b pawn is lost, it's all over. Um, so, therefore, we want to play king b8 to encourage promotion of our c pawn. And now queen to e5, pinning this, will allow us pawn b6. <laughs> And then we could play king a7 or something to encourage promotion again. Well, that doesn't look right either. Hmm. I'm confused. So, pawn b6, queen e5. No, I'm sorry. Pawn b6, king... King, oh, I see. Yeah, pawn b6 forces black to choose whether to move their queen or to move their king. If their king moves to d6 and we play king b6 or king b8, then queen e5 pinning the pawn is no longer available because the king's on d6 in the way of the pin. If black plays the king from e6 to d7, that breaks the pin and we can just promote right away. So b6 forces black to make a choice. And regardless where the king goes, uh, either of these two squares, um, that blocks either this line or it blocks this line. So one of the two pins is broken. Otherwise, black's king just hangs out here and black burns a move doing nothing. And on that move that they burn doing nothing, then we play things like king a uh, king somewhere. <laughs> it's not easy. Uh, b6 does not give anything away, but black could just put their king back on f5 and challenge us to try to find a winning move. Um, yeah, it's not super easy. It's certainly doable. So let's get our board editor open again. This is going to be easier this time around because there are so few pieces. Black king on f5. Black king's on e6. Queen on g7. Black to play. And we can just look at the table base. And I set up the board upside down, apparently. That's cool. How was I supposed to know that I was setting up the board upside down? Did I just do that? Is this really upside down? Or did I just misread things? Wait, are we talking about the same position here? C7, oh, our pawn's on B5. No, it's on B6 now. Black to play. There is a disagreement here. Queen g2 check. What? So this position, this puzzle was suggested by Stockfish. Um... That's really weird. Uh, we could set it up from the beginning. And maybe I've made some transcription error. With king b7, pawn b4, king f5. Yeah, let's try setting it up from scratch. So put this over here, this back here. Say white to play. Say white to play. Analysis board. b5. Oh, our object is not to win this. Really? 
are objects to draw this? Like I was saying, V6 doesn't give anything away. It forces Black to make a decision. And all these things are true. Black can actually draw this. I was not so... I was not 100% certain this is a win. And I was struggling a lot trying to explain how just White wins this. Um, I'm surprised B7... Like, this is what I was trying to read out in my head. And what concerned me was this move. Um, but, yeah, black cannot win that. Interesting. Yeah, even after this, after this, and this, like, black has no way to exploit this. If this queen were in the corner, black could play king c7. But that's not the situation. So, yeah, black, black does not win. White manages to draw by connecting the pieces in the corner. The whole time I was thinking, well, this kind of formation looks like a draw. But, um, hmm. apparently, it actually is drawn, even with black's king so far removed from the c8 promotion square. Okay. All right, uh, white to play. Note that black's pieces are in the corner. King a2, rook a1. White's king's on d2, rook on b8. So we just set up the checkmate. And black escapes the mate. And then we just go win the rook on a1. Done that before. All right. And then this one, a white to play. Hmm. I wonder. So our kings are aligned g4 and g2. Black's got a pawn in h3, which they would love to promote, and they just aren't going to get a chance to do it. The rook on e6 is hanging, so we take the rook and then we win. That's the plan. So let's take the rook, pawn h2. Black would love to promote this pawn in h1, but they're not going to get an opportunity to promote it because this is check. And with this check striking this pawn, uh, black has a decision to make. And that decision is do they move the king into the corner or back this way or some other way? Uh, the corner doesn't really matter. Uh, but yeah, if they go anywhere other than f1, then white plays king g3 and... Um, well, either if they move to f1, you just take the pawn. Uh, so if they go back to g1, you play king g3, and black plays h1 knight, and then you play king f3. And that's not stalemate, because black has to move the knight and lose it, and then get mated. Um, but yeah, h1 knight is check. So... I don't think we're going to get any better puzzles than this one. So again, thanks to developers of this free open source tool, leaststudy.org, for making such a great tool available. Hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, take care, and we'll see you next time.